Hello, praise the Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made. We are so grateful today. Happy New Year. We are coming to the New Year 2024, and I hope that you are excited about the year, that you are able to achieve all your plans for this year, and that you are not ashamed or afraid uh, to make plans for the next year. Uh, don't be tired. Don't be discouraged. I know that God will give us a wonderful year. So I pray for you even as I invite you and I welcome you to today's service. This is the last service for the year, man, and we are so happy and excited that God saw us through. Uh, you know, when we started this show and, and, you know, we had all our challenges, but we are so grateful that God actually saw, saw us through. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for bringing us to the end of the year. We thank you for this wonderful day. May it be a blessing to many of your people. That even tonight, as they go to different places to celebrate and to usher in the new year, we pray that you will be with them in everything that they do. Let your grace come upon us in everything. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. Welcome to our service. May the Lord bless you and the Lord be with you.
Praise the Lord. Happy New Year. We have made it by the grace of God. The year has been great. And the year that is coming, I believe, will even be greater. So I know that you may have had the challenges this year. Uh, this 2023 has been quite challenging for many people, but it has also been a great blessing for others. And I, I come to you today to encourage you and to let you know that though you may not have achieved all the plans that you had planned to achieve this year, 2023, the next year, 2024, you will achieve every dream that you have. I know that there are those who are looking back at the year with great regrets. But even as you look back in the year with regrets, I also want you to look uh, forward to 2024 with a lot of hope. And I pray to you and I pray for you today that even as you step into the year, you will step with it uh, with optimism and with belief that God is with you. We have come to the end, and today I want to share what is in my heart regarding the year 2024. And I want to share with you four scriptures to guide you in the year 2024. Because I, have a, I know that 2024 will be a better year. It will be a greater year. It will be a year of abundance and a year of plenty. And I pray for you, and I pray that God will be with you. So I just want to share scriptures, four scriptures to help you and to guide you in the year 2024. Whenever life becomes hard in this coming year, look at these scriptures and be encouraged. At any point in your life, if you face an uncertain moment or an uncertain time, look back into, uh, for, uh, to these scriptures and let the word of God become a source of encouragement. Let the word of God become a source of hope. Let this word of God become your pillar and become your foundation because this year will be a great year. There will be some challenges. There will be some shakeups. There will be times when many of us will feel like we want to give up but I also pray that God will be with you. I also pray for my nation of Kenya because I see uh, the, the coming year, some, some uprising uh, and some people, you know, on the streets, but we'll look at that later. But for now, let us look at the, uh, these four scriptures that will become a source of en encouragement for you. Scripture number one that I want us to share is in Isaiah 43 and verse 19. The Bible, the book of Isaiah, chapter 43 and verse 19. Now, the truth of the matter is this. You will hear many of us pastors and preachers uh, use this scripture to define the new year. We, many of us will use this verse to actually talk about the new year. The Bible says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. And I want to say this even as a prophecy. For this coming year, there will be times of wilderness. There will be times of wasteland. There are people that will find themselves in the wilderness and will find themselves in the wastelands. But do not forget what God is saying, that there will be a new thing. Now, this verse speaks of God's ability to bring about new beginnings and transformations, even in seemingly impossible situations. Whatever circumstances we face in this life, let this verse speak to you and speak in your situation because it showcases the ability of God to bring about new beginnings and transformations. I believe in God 100% and I believe that God has the ability 
In fact, he is beyond the ability to bring a new beginning in your life. I don't know the kind of circumstance or situation you are in right now. I don't know how this year has been, but this coming year, you've got to step into it believing that God has the ability to bring a new beginning in your life. You may look into the past and say that there has been promises of new beginnings in your life, but nothing has come to pass. And I want to say to you that this time is different if you believe it. God has the ability to bring about new beginnings and transformations, even in seemingly impossible situations. And Isaiah 43, as verse 19, even as we read it, this is a powerful scripture that speaks of God's promises to bring about something new and remarkable something new and remarkable. It is a message of hope and renewal in the midst of challenging circumstances. The year we are coming into is a year of hope where you've got to remain hopeful that things will work out because in truth, things will work out. This scripture is a message of hope and renewal in the midst of challenging circumstances. There are people right now, you're watching me, and you need a renewal in your life. You need a change in your life. You need a new thing in your life. And so I pray for you today that you'll begin to experience this new renewal, that you'll begin to experience this new hope, this new beginning that the Bible is talking about. Let us break down this verse. Um, and see what it actually says. The verse begins by declaring, See, I am doing a new thing. That is what the Bible begins, or the verse begins by declaring. This signifies a fresh start or a new phase initiated by God himself. A fresh start initiated by God himself. What joy should we find, my brothers and my sisters, when God initiates a new beginning in your life? It means that whatever God initiates, it is him to sustain it. If God brings a new beginning in your life, it is his responsibility to maintain that new beginning in your life. It is his will to bring a new beginning in your life. And so I pray today that God will initiate a new beginning in your life and that you'll begin to believe in him, that you'll begin to trust him in all things. See, I am doing a new thing. See, I am doing a new thing. This is an assurance that God is not limited by the past or constrained by what has been. He's not a God who is limited by the things that have happened in your life or constrained by what has been, but rather he is actively at work to bring about change and transformation. And I declare to you today, but this is the God we serve. See, I am doing a new thing. From whatever country you are watching me from, the Bible, the Lord is saying this year, see, I am doing a new thing. From whatever continent, see, I am doing a new thing. From whichever village, see, I am doing a new thing. From whatever city, see, I am doing a new thing. The fact is this. This scripture uses imagery, and the imagery that this verse uses is striking because this is what God says. He mentions that this new thing is already springing up. It's already happening. It's in the process of happening. 
It's like a new growth imagine in the midst of barrenness. God is not waiting for a perfect condition or a perfect, a perfect time. It's happening despite the difficulties. Now, what I'm saying is 2024 will have great difficulties. Even in our nation, there will be great difficulties. But in the midst of these difficulties, God will do a new thing. Because he is not uh, stopped or limited by the circumstances or by the things of the past, he is assuring us that even in the midst of these things, he still has the ability to bring a change and to bring a transformation. He mentions that this new thing that he's doing is already at work. It's already in the process of happening. It's a new growth in the midst of barrenness. Where you experienced barrenness in 2023, you will experience plenty and growth in 2024. God's work is not waiting for perfect timing. He is a perfect timing. And it's not waiting for the perfect conditions because he creates those perfect conditions. It's happening to you and will happen in your life despite the difficulties that you face. See, I am doing a new thing. See, I am doing a new thing. Then the second portion of this verse begins by a question. And he says, do you not perceive it? See, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Now, in this portion and in this second part, God invites us to pay attention, to be aware and recognize his work in the midst of our lives. Sometimes the new things God is doing might not be immediately evident or might not match our expectations, but he encourages us to discern his actions, to discern that he is doing these things. Do you not perceive it? See, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And so I pray uh, that we will be encouraged to be able to pay attention to the doings of the Lord. You see, one of the main challenges of believers is that sometimes we complain too much. We complain together with people who do not know God. We find them complaining and we join them in their complaining. And therefore, we fail to perceive the new thing that God is doing in our lives. The second major problem that we have as believers is comparisons. We compare ourselves to people who do not have a proper foundation on God and people who doubt God. And so we compare ourselves to them and therefore we fail to perceive the new things that God is doing in our lives. And even now as I speak this word, there are some people, maybe you are watching, and you are still doubting even what I'm saying. And you are putting us together and saying all pastors are liars because this is what they tell us every year. And you see, this is the thing. If that is the mindset that you have, then it is impossible for you to perceive the new things that God is doing. And if you cannot perceive it, then you cannot receive it. And so the new things will happen. Whether you want them to happen or not, it's only that they will not happen in your life if you, don't, uh, if you doubt them and if you do not perceive it. God is inviting us to pay attention. Pay attention to the things that God has done in your life. Pay attention to the miracles that he has performed. Pay attention to the uh, breakthroughs that he has given you. Pay attention to the moments in which he has provided for you. Pay attention to the times that he has fought for you. Pay attention to the times in which he has given you strength when you are not strengthened. Pay attention to the times he has become your encouragement. Pay attention to the times he has shielded you from the armies of the devil. 
pay attention to when he has protected you and, keep, and kept you safe. I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And the third portion of this scripture says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That is a very, very encouraging portion. And this part, this latter part, uh, illustrates God's ability to make a way where it seems impossible. This is a response of faith. God's ability to make a way where it seems impossible. Even in the wilderness, where paths are unclear and non-existent, God promises to create a way. He doesn't just stop at making a way. He goes further to promise streams in the wasteland. So this signifies not just survival, but thriving. And I want to say to you, in this year, you will not survive, you will thrive. Let me repeat that. You will not survive, you will thrive, providing refreshment and sustenance in desolate places. This is what God is talking about when he says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. Wildernesses do not have clear paths. Wastelands do not have life. But the Lord is saying, I will make a way for you where there is no way, and I will bring you water and refresh you where you're in a place, when you're in a place that is lacking in refreshment. This is the Lord who is saying, I will sustain you. I will do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So God is promising to create a way and not just stop there, but he's also promising that he will create this. He will bring us springs that signify not just survival, but thriving, providing refreshment and sustenance in desolate places. Maybe your 2023 was a desolate place. Your 2024 will have streams in the wilderness. God will provide for you and he will bring you things from all angles so that you can be encouraged. Take this verse with you because this is the first verse that I would like to encourage you with. Isaiah 43, 19. This is a message of encouragement and faith. It is a message that I hope also assures you that God is actively working in your life, that is actively bringing about newness, and that is providing guidance even in moments of difficulties and in moments where you experience challenging circumstances. It's a verse that is offering refreshment and sustenance where it seems impossible. This verse is a great encouragement to me. It's a call to trust in God's ability to bring about change and transformation, even in the most barren aspects of our lives. This is the first scripture that I would like to encourage you with, to move with it into this coming year. The second scripture that I would like us to look at for this coming year is Philippians chapter 3, 13 to 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Now, this verse emphasizes the importance of leaving the past behind. And I love it. And it also emphasizes how we are supposed to look forward to the future, focusing on the goals that have been set by God. It emphasizes leaving the past behind. In this year, even as we cross over and we get this year, leave the past behind. 
Apostle Paul, who is the author of this scripture, shares a perspective on personal growth and spiritual progress. So what he does, even as he shares this verse, is that he starts by acknowledging that he hasn't reached the ultimate goal yet. He has also not yet uh, reached that goal despite his dedication and accomplishment in his faith journey, Paul recognizes that there is always more to pursue in his relationship with Christ. And this should be our theme, our focus, that there is always more to pursue, that there is always more to do, that there is always more things we can give to, uh, towards Christ and towards the work of Jesus Christ. He uses imagery to convey his approach. And this is what he says, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. So this, this phrase encapsulates a crucial aspect of Christian living, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. This means letting go of past mistakes, letting go of past achievements, letting go of past experiences, both positive and negative things, okay? Letting go, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. So anything that may hinder or distract you from moving forward in faith, let it go, lose it. You may not have prayed enough the way you wanted to pray in 2023, let that go and begin afresh in the coming year. You may not have fasted as many times as you would have planned. Let it go and plan for the coming year. Let go of past mistakes. Let go of past achievements and begin to walk towards Christ. So Paul emphasizes the importance of not allowing the past, whether failures or successes, to define or confine one's present or future journey with God. So don't allow your past successes to define your relationship with God. Don't allow your past failures to confine you in regards to your relationship with God. I heard someone say some time back, that the greatest, the, uh, the worst place for someone is the place of success. That your greatest challenge as a human being will be your success. Because once you are successful, you will be required to replicate your success every time. And if you can't do that, there are people who get stuck in their past successes. And they keep singing the songs or telling stories of what they used to be, what they used to do. So you become a person who is confined to your past successes. There are also other people who are confined to their past failures. And they, can't, they don't seem to go beyond their past failures. They are so discouraged. They are so uh, disoriented. They are so down because of how many times they have failed in the past. And so they allow their mistakes to dictate where they are going in the future and how their relationship with God looks like. So the essence of this passage or this scripture that I have picked for this year, it lies in what we call the forward momentum. You've got to keep going, a deliberate and purposeful pursuit of the goal set by God. So Paul's language portrays a continuous, energetic pressing onward. So the goal he refers to is the ultimate prize of being united with Christ to be more like him and to fulfill the purpose for which God called him. So this scripture isn't about just 
disregarding the past entirely, but rather not being held captive by it. It's about forward-looking attitude, a determination to grow spiritually, and a focus on the goal of deeper union with Christ. So what we have to understand with this is that the past should not hold you captive, but you can learn from the past. You can learn things in your past. The past has better lessons and more lessons, but the past cannot hold you captive. You've got to be free and you've got to keep walking and moving towards the goal of life. So this scripture is so encouraging and Paul's message encourages us to have a forward-oriented message to keep striving towards spiritual maturity and to live out our calling in Christ, embracing the future with hope and purpose rather than being weighed down by past mistakes or past achievements. So this scripture is a call for us as believers of Jesus Christ to persevere in the faith journey, seeking to align ourselves more closely with the purpose and character of Christ. Make this your 2024 scripture, guiding scripture, forgetting what is behind and striving forward, pursuing, moving. Scripture number three that I would like to encourage you with and that I would like you to have it as a, as a year, uh, as a 2024 yearly scripture. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 to 23. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 to 23. And the Bible says, because, the Lord's great, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Ah, the verse, this verse is one of my favorite verses, and I know many of you love this verse, and it's one of your favorite. It highlights God's faithfulness and mercy, reminding us that his love and compassion are renewed every day. It makes us believe that Every morning when I wake up, I am waking up to new masses. I am waking up to new compassion. I am waking up to a new renewal every day of my life. And therefore, waking up in the morning in this year 2024 does not become a burden to you, but instead it becomes a time of hope. I know people who hate waking up in the morning and I know people who want to sleep forever, but I want to encourage you today that waking up in the morning should be a thing that you look forward to. Because in that morning, in that day, the masses of God and the, uh, the, the compassions of God are new and his faithfulness is great. So this scripture is a powerful dec declaration of God's unwavering love, compassion, and faithfulness, even in the midst of challenging and difficult times, okay? Now, I know that many of us rarely read the book of Lamentations, but it, because it is often uh, associated with grief and sorrow, it was written by Jeremiah the prophet in the aftermath of the destruction of Jerusalem now, in the midst of this despair, this pain, these verses stand out as a beacon of hope and reassurance. Whatever that has been destroyed in your life, let this scripture stand for you and stand with you as a beacon of hope and reassurance. So the passage of scripture that we've read begins with the affirmation that despite the difficult circumstances, God's great love prevents you, as, her, as, your, as his people, from being consumed or utterly destroyed. This passage, this scripture, is a recognition that even in the face of trials, God's love acts as a protective force, persevering you as his people. 
It's his shield. It is a protection. That the word of God becomes a protection. That God's love protects us from all forces. So now the key message in this scripture, and the reason why I've shared it, is found in this phrase, his compassions never fail. So this statement emphasizes that there is a consistency in the compassions of God. It emphasizes that there is a reliability of God's compassion. We can rely on his compassion. We can continue to have hope and believe that his compassion will not change in the morning. Unlike human emotions or attitudes that can fluctuate or fail, God's compassion remains steadfast and unwavering. It's an assurance that God's love and concern for his people endure regardless of the situation. So this verse is a serious um, a verse, an encouraging verse. It continues to say, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This highlights the fresh renewal of God's compassion every day. Just as each morning brings a new day, God's compassion is continually renewed. Therefore, it offers us a fresh start. It offers us a fresh hope, and it offers us fresh support with the arrival of each day. Meaning that every day in your life is a blessed day. For the next 365 days, every day will be a day of blessings. Meaning that you will have 365 days of blessings or 365 blessings in one year. So we, the reference to God's faithfulness in this verse underscores his reliability, as we have said, his trustworthiness, his consistency, and his faithfulness isn't about to change and is not subject to any change. It's great and enduring. And you see, when we use these words, we are encouraged. So Lamentation 3, 22 to 23, my friends, is a scripture that I would like, that I've, I've, I've picked it so that it can become an encouragement. It is a reminder that even in the darkest moments, his love and his compassion and faithfulness remain constant and consistent. He renews them every morning. He gives us and provides for us hope and comfort and a reason to trust in his unwavering care and faithfulness. Scripture number four, and this is the last scripture that I want to share with you for this year, is Psalm 65, verses 11. Psalm 65, verses 11. You crown the year with your bounty, and your cuts overflow with abundance. Uh, now, Psalm 65, uh, verse 11, illustrates the abundance and generosity of God in providing for his people. So this verse uses uh, imagery, again, uh, to depict God's, ple uh, uh, God's blessings and provision throughout the year. You crown the year with bounty. May your, crown, may your year, 2024, be crowned with bounty. May our 2024 be crowned with bounty. So the verse begins with an imagery of a crown. May it be crowned. Now, a crown is a symbol of honor. It is a symbol of authority and richness. Therefore, when the Bible says you crown the year with your bounty, it portrays God as the one who adorns the year. God as the one who adorns the year with his goodness, with his richness, and with his generosity. It is God who does these things, just as a crown signifies the 
pinnacle of royalty or the power of royalty, God's bounty represents the pinnacle of his provision and blessings poured out during the course of the year. You crown the year with bounty. May your year be crowned by the Lord. May he adorn your year and our years with bounty. Then the Bible says, the following phrase says, and your cuts overflow with abundance. Your cuts overflow. Now this extends this imagery further. Understand that the Bible is constantly written in terms of imagery. It creates images so that we are able to understand. Now, in ancient times and in the ancient days, cuts laden with produce and goods or riches were signs of wealth and prosperity. So in this particular scripture, it symbolizes God's abundant provision and overflowing blessings, so much so that his cuts are brim, brimming with abundance, signifying an exorbitant, almost endless overflow of his goodness. The cuts of God, your cuts overflow with abundance. You crown the year with bounty and your cuts overflow with abundance. May the Lord crown your year with bounty. May your cuts overflow. The verse encapsulates the idea, my friends, that God's provision isn't small or limited, but it is abundant and plentiful. It speaks of his generosity that goes beyond what is needed, overflowing with blessings throughout the year. And I want to declare to you that even as you make this scripture, one of your scriptures in the year, the Lord, may the Lord overflow you, you with blessings throughout the year. And the last thing that I want to say about Psalm 6511 is that it celebrates and acknowledges God's role as the ultimate provider, as Jehovah Jireh. It emphasizes his abundant blessings that encompass every aspect of life. Every aspect of life. May every aspect of your life be provided for. Crowning each year, each passing year with his goodness and overflowing cuts with his abundance. This is a testament to his continuous care and provision for you and for his people. So I pray for you today that even as you make these scriptures part of your life and part of your, script, uh, part of your walk with God, may these scriptures speak into your life. May they become an encouragement to you in everything that you do. Thank you and let us say a prayer now, even as we bless this year. And now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord be with you. And Father, we pray for this year and we ask that, Father, your grace will continue to be upon your people, that you'll continue to surround them with your spirit and with your presence. No weapon fashioned against any one of them will prosper, but this, that this year will bring abundance, that this year will bring great things, that this year will uh, bring a great bounty upon your people. May there be abundance and plenty to be found in your house. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. If you're not born again and you do not know Jesus Christ and you want to receive Jesus Christ into your life, this is the time. Say this prayer after me. Lord, I come to you. I believe in Jesus and I believe that Jesus, you are Lord. I confess that I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to pray for you. We want to hear from you. Please talk to us, contact us, so that we can send you materials that will help you to grow in the faith. The Lord be with you, and the Lord keep you, and the Lord give you an, a year of abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>